Our story begins in France at the 1926 Paris Auto Show. French industrialist and automotive pioneer André Gustave Citron presented his company's all-new B14 line of automobiles in a display alongside Peugeot and Ford. André strived to make his cars state-of-the-art and the latest creation was a testimony to his accomplishments. The B14 was innovative, being constructed on a lighter, stronger chassis and featured an all-steel body, which was revolutionary for the times. Under the hood, the B14 was powered by a 1,583 cubic centimeter four-cylinder engine that developed 22 horsepower at the rear wheels through a three-speed gearbox. The suspension utilized semi-elliptical springs on all four corners and the cable-operated brakes were assisted by Westinghouse electrical servos that gave them extra braking force. The B14 was offered in seven body styles, with the Normandy being the utility model. The car proved to be successful, with almost 128,000 units being sold in its three-year model run. The Citroën B14 was to France what the Model T Ford was to the United States. André Citroën visited Henry Ford to see Ford Motor Company's assembly line process. The car appeared in famous cartoon strips like Tintin by Herge as seen in the 1950 book Land of Black Gold and driven by Thompson and Thompson where the car was filled with an unstable mixture of gasoline and Formula 14 resulting in an engine explosion. In 1985, Heller of France released a plastic multi-piece construction assembly kit of the Citroën B14 Normandy. The instruction sheet on the 2021 release featured in this video consists of 16 easy-to-follow construction diagrams. The images include tinted items culminating in a full-color, four-picture blueprint and panel. To see the instructions for yourself, visit www.heller.fr and search for the Citroën B14 Normandy. Our model kit includes five parts trees, the first one being molded in white plastic, the second one in grey plastic, a chrome parts tree, a clear parts tree, as well as a black tire parts tree. The first parts tree we're looking at is the white part tree, and here we can see the fender assembly. We also see right and left hand sides of the frame and the shock absorbers mounted on the back. These are more of a spring and knuckle type shock absorber as opposed to the tube type we have today. Here we have our radiator. There's the hood molded open like this. But if we turn it over, you can see the score lines underneath so that you can fold the hood size down or have it displayed folded open. There are quite a few mold marks underneath here which are easily removed with sandpaper and hobby files. We also have the cowl with the gas tank right up front and then some of the cross braces for our frame as well as our steering arm and our tie rods. We have the fan, the radiator hose, both sides of the engine block. We also have the dashboard, the front axle, the horn, the rear axle, the cylinder head, as well as the muffler, the pedals for the floor, a bunch of brackets, the water pump in the front, as well as our Westinghouse uh, electronic brake enhancer. <laughs> and then we have the wheels and the wheel backs, the belts and pulleys, the steering column, and our exhaust system up here and many of the other smaller parts. There is our steering wheel as well. Overall, the molding is quite nice. There is not a lot of flash on this, if any at all. There are some seam lines, but all of those could easily be taken care of. Our rear differential here also has harmonic balancers on either end of the drive shaft, just for a nice, smoother ride. Our second parts tree consists of the light gray molded plastic pieces. Here we have our body shell, as well as the roof panel pieces, the interior pieces and our seats here, and the braces for holding up the roof. So let's take a look at this up into the camera. So here we have both the exterior of our body as well as the interior of our body molded as one piece. So you will have to paint this the body color and then paint the interior color right behind those panels. The floor pan has some mold marks in the corners, 
and unfortunately those carry on to the wood paneling but just with the way this is constructed it would be pretty hard to uh, put the mold marks anywhere else. The roof has a nice texture molded in place and so does the back window. Here is the back panel, the back tailgate for our Normandy. We also have the back wall. The little holes are where the seat backs are going to be glued into place. Again, very nicely molded. However, there are mold marks all on the inside of this roof, which you should address if you can. Get the number 16 hobby blade in here and scrape off the high ones and try to fill in the low ones and sand them a bit smooth. Unfortunately, you will lose the texturing in here. And that is most unfortunate. We also have mold marks. There's five of them on these panels. So again, something to clean up. But I don't think with the parts count that this would take you very long to build this model. Our chrome parts tree includes the windshield frame, the fuel cap for the gas tank, our gear chef lever and our parking brake lever, as well as the headlights mounted on the bar, a wonderful grill with a mesh inside which you could either paint or cut this out and add in your own mesh. And then if we turn it over, you will also see the little caps for the wheels. Again, very nicely done by Heller and the chrome looks excellent. The clear plastic parts tree is universal to many of these Heller kits and includes this nice split windshield for a cowl. However, we will not be using it on the Normandy. Instead, we'll be using the regular windscreen, the back window and the headlights. Five tires are included in the model kit, and although they do not have the Michelin logos on the side of the tires, the tread pattern is quite nice and will look wonderful on your completed model. The decal sheet includes three license plates, a dashboard instrument cluster, and the Citroen logo for the front of the radiator. Our license plates are 2958RE7, 950CT2, and 1890CB6. Just for a little fun comparison, we have the fenders from a 1925 Model T sitting right beside the 1926 Normandy. And as you can see, the Normandy is longer, being a pickup truck sort of thing. But the Model T fenders, if we lay these right over the top, you can see that they are pretty much the same width this way. They are a little wider on the edges than the Normandy, but the inner dimensions where the engine sits and the passengers will be is exactly the same. Since I don't have any Heller paints in my collection, I made this conversion chart for my tester's paint acquisition. Luckily, Heller Paint uses the same name and numbers as Humbrol Paint. I will also use real photos of the car for reference in my build. We begin our 1926 Citroen B14 Normandy with the multi-piece engine assembly. I found that the parts fit of the engine went together tightly and without any issues. The main issue is that Heller never labeled the engine parts, so some research is involved to understand the pieces. Online research has been difficult, however I do have my uncle's 1926 Dykes Automobile and Gasoline Engine Encyclopedia. Although the book covers American cars, it does show similar parts and designs used in European cars. On our Heller engine, we have a generator mounted on the top front of the engine block. The terminal block is clearly visible at the front of the generator, while the cutout box is mounted at the back. In the 1920s, there was two systems of electric starter motors for cars, the flywheel application and the crankshaft application. A gear and chain style crankshaft activated starter motor is mounted on the transmission. In addition to the electric brake servos, this is also a Westinghouse electrical component. For our electrical system for our car, we have a magneto mounted on the side of the engine, which you can see in the parts right here. Our Citroen also comes with an updraft carburetor here, which looks very similar to this one in the Dykes Encyclopedia. Our two-piece exhaust manifold pipe and muffler went together really nicely. However, I did find there are a few sink marks, especially around this bend here and up in here. 
And right in here toward the back is a little space and uh, that made the pipe very fragile. So what I did is I filled in those areas with Tamiya Putty White and then sanded them smooth for a wonderful look here. Continuous type of look. And the other thing would be to just drill a little hole in the end of the exhaust pipe right in here just to open that up to make it look more realistic. Also of note on the engine is the wonderful bolt pattern on our cylinder head. We also have the inlet here and that needs to slope forward much like on a Model T engine. We also have our spark plugs in there and then we have our timing cover right here and this little area is to fill with oil. That's an oil filler tube. And then on the back of the engine I'll notice this little button right there. I do believe that is one of the grounding strap points for either the starter motor or something of that nature. But basically that's what it is. It's a terminal point. While building this kit, I discovered that the holes on the back of the pulleys were just a little bit too small to actually fit on the front of the engine. So I used a 5 64 inch drill and I simply turned the pulleys over and just carefully drilled into the back of the pulleys, being careful not to drill all the way through and uh, just opened up the holes wide enough so that it would fit onto that engine block. Here I have the engine of my Citroen B14 after it has all been painted. This little white bare plastic area is where the exhaust manifold is going to glue on once I get this into the frame. And you can see the wonderful little gold filler cap I added up on here and the magneto down below. And if you want to wire in the magneto, you just need to drill a couple little holes in the end and then bring up your spark plug wires to the top of the spark plugs, which I still need to paint in this case. I did paint all the little head bolts in here and added the fan. And then we have our carburetor on this side of the engine block. And down below we have our flywheel starter just right in there. Again, very nicely done and will paint up really excellently. The frame on our Citroen B14 is rather unique as it uses the fenders for support. The mold marks and sink marks on the fenders and frame were corrected before assembly. I found that the brake backing plates need to go on in a certain way to intersect the axle at 90 degrees. Rotating the plates will fix the position. The rear axle needs a little seam line cleanup, especially on these drive shaft discs. It is interesting to note that the front axle is mounted overslung on the springs while the rear axle is mounted underslung on the springs. Here is our Citroen B14 chassis and fender assembly before painting and engine installation. The rear differential needs to be snaked through the rear springs before the brake backing plates can be installed. The Westinghouse solenoid brake assist motor needs aluminum paint before its installation on the frame. Now I want to paint the undercarriage of our Citroen and what I'm going to use is this trim clad flat black rust paint. This is enamel based paint and I also have this number four brush. As you can see it's pretty tiny but it will get in and give me a nice bit of control here as I paint the model. So what we'll do is we'll just open up the cap. I've already shaken this off camera just in case you're wondering. And there it is, our nice black enamel paint. And we'll just dip the brush in. Be careful not to dip it higher than right here. That is the furrow and you don't want to get paint into that area. And then we can just simply start painting maybe up in here. You can see how nice that goes on. It's been years since I've actually brush painted a model, but I thought for this video it would help make things go faster. And here's our chassis after applying the flat black trim clad paint. I did leave some white areas around because I'm going to paint those with the gloss black and something like the wheels is just so that the other wheel will not be uh, held up with any paint. Here we have the painted frame and fenders before adding the engine and exhaust. Notice how smoothly the trim clad gloss black laid out on the fenders. This is all brush painted. My research has finally led me to an answer as to what those discs are at the end of the drive shaft. This is known as the thermoid hardy flexible connection. 
or joints that are used at each end of the propeller or drive shaft instead of universal joints. Three flexible discs made of thermoid composition are placed between the spiders and held securely by means of bolts and corrugated washers. Note that with the use of these joints, a spline shaft, as shown in figure 48, is not necessary. By removing a few bolts, the shaft may be removed. So I will paint these according to what I discovered. One thing that I noticed with the tires is that Heller added in this countersunk area where my stick is going around, and this is so that the rim will fit flushly against that tire, just like so. And here we have the completed frame with the engine and the exhaust pipe stuck in, as well as painting into those discs with some brown leather type of paint. And you'll notice here we've got our Westinghouse electronic brake solenoid right there, all painted up and with the brown inside there as well. There's our exhaust pipe right in there, hooked up to the engine. You can also see the brown in between the discs, just to sort of represent like our leather or whatever that might be. I left the Heller name in the back as well, just so I remember who manufactured this kit. Now one thing I did do is on these brakes, I took my number 16 hobby knife and just scraped the paint off along there. And that is so that it won't drag on the wheel. I also left a bit of the white plastic, which will be covered by that brake drum. And I do believe if you push the wheel on, it will lock it into place. But one thing I did do is I painted along the edge here with black. And that is so that when you press the wheel into the tire, like so, and turn it over, you won't see any white plastic up along the inside of that rim. So once this is all together, it'll look quite nice. I still haven't decided if I'm going to paint these wheels gloss black or the body color because that was sort of an option back in the day. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. Next up, we need to add in and build our radiator and hook the hoses up to it. So we will do that next. The radiator assembly is basically three parts. What we have is the shroud and the front of the radiator. Then we have the radiator back. And way up here, part number 42, is the radiator cap. So I will have to cut off the cap, scrape a little paint in here, glue it to the top of the radiator, cut the radiator off of the parts tree, and then take the back of the radiator, which I cut off the white parts tree, and just glue it in there. And remember, before we glue it in, we have to get the plastic to plastic contact. So that means scraping away the chrome plating in here and putting some glue along there so that the two will cement together. I also have to paint the back here all flat black as well as painting inside the radiator. Now you could remove this and add in a mesh if you want but I'm not going to do that on this model because I want to show how it builds right out of the box. So just a black wash in there will be fine. Oh, and there's also a Citroen decal on the decal sheet, which will go right into here. Here's our Citroen radiator finished with the radiator cap installed and our decal right here. I did find the decal a little hard to put on because of its size. And there is a bit of a V-shape underneath here on the radiator, right where the decal is attached. And then on the back, I also painted this all black and glued it in. There's our little tank on the top. And I did notice that the chrome is a little bit weak on here, so I added in a strip of Molotov chrome paint. But I don't think it really looks that good on here. So those are just some of the things. You may want to repaint your entire radiator with the Molotol chrome paint pen. It's up to you. One thing that you may be having trouble with is the dashboard being mounted into the cowl. What I found was that the tips of the edges of the dashboard were a little too pointed and would not fit inside the cowl. So what I did is I took a file and I just rounded the edges a little bit until it was able to actually fit inside the cowl. And now it does look nice and tight in there, just like it's supposed to be on the real car. One thing that is really nice about this model is the fit and finish of the body onto the fenders. And as you can see, there is no gap along the top of that fender arch onto the body. And again, this looks really nice. One thing that I find interesting is that 
the actual truck is not flat to the bottom like they are in America. This one actually steps up and is supported by a couple of beams underneath, which are right on the chassis. So you can actually see right through to the other side of the car. I find that quite unique for, you know, a 1926 or even just any truck in general. Because like I said, usually these are flat on the bottom and go right in between those fender arches. Here we have the body of the Citroen, and you'll notice that the cowl is not molded in place. It's actually a separate component. And what I found was that my cowl is a little bit misshapen. And I do believe you're supposed to glue the cowl onto the front of the doors, which I find to be a bit problematic. So one of the ways I am thinking of doing this is gluing this back body piece down onto our frame and then gluing the cowl into it on the frame in that sort of way in order to make this all fit together. But before I do that, I have to figure out how I'm going to paint this and what color I'm going to paint it. So one thing we can do is look back in the past and see what they did on the real Citroen. Sonia Delaunay was an artist who was known for her use of geometric shapes and designs in fashion, painting, and textiles. In 1924, she designed a pattern with geometric shapes and bright colors that was meant to be the paint design for the Citroen B12. Throughout the 1920s and beyond, she included automobiles as a canvas for her modern art style. These are but a few of her stunning designs. Here we have the body panels all cleaned up and we've got this front bulkhead which the seats will mount onto which gets glued right into here as well as the rear tailgate back here. And one thing I noticed with the front bulkhead is that when you put it in it doesn't really touch the sides at the top. There is a bit of a gap in here. So once I paint the wood grain inside the bulkhead I'll have to just glue it together and pinch the tops so that it will solidify up in here and hold this together. I also noticed a similar problem with the tailgate, although not as bad, but still will need to be pinched in at the top. But that is sort of good in a way, because then I can paint in the wood grain on the inside panels and not have to, you know, get into a corner and paint upward. But just keep in mind that you will have to pinch the tops together and hold it while it's all gluing. Before I begin painting the body color, I need to glue the cowl to the front of the doors with crazy glue or something, and that's going to be quite a bit of a challenge right there. In the meantime, I used the Citadel paint system to paint the wood grain on our woody body, and that was started with a base color of XV88, followed by the shade of Agrath Earthshade to go into all the cracks, and then bringing that all back up with Baylor Brown as our first layer. And our second layer, which would go along the top edges where the sun is hitting it, is Zamistri Desert. And here's how it looks in the final. And you can see how much that really looks like wood grain. So I hope you get some great success in doing this and that you can copy this onto your own model. Here we have the interior painted up, and this is the Humbrol Brown on the bottom, number 10. And what we also have is Tester's Rubber Base Paint painted onto the back. So I took the seat tops and glued them in place before painting, and I left the holes with no paint in them as best I could. And then what we have is the seat bottom, and this area here is painted with gloss black and that will glue in down there. And we also have the jump seat itself, and I think it's pretty cool that they added in these little hinges, even though the seat is gonna be in the down position, and that will just reside in the holes in there. So again, really cool stuff. I guess the Normandy had the passenger seat in there, bolted to the floor, and if you wanted a passenger, you just flip down the jump seat. 
I also added in the black paint for the hinges and the latches on the top. So again, this is going pretty nice, turning out pretty well. The only thing I'm going to need to do next is glue in the gear shift levers and the foot pedals. And then I'm going to try to glue the cowl one side at a time with the crazy glue. Normally I would use plastic model cement, but I think for bending this into shape, it's going to need something a little like crazy glue, where I can just glue the one side in and then let that dry really quickly, and then put glue on the other side and bend it into shape. And that'll save me from holding the cowl for a very long period of time. But overall, it will lock in place. Then I can paint the sides and the cowl into the body color. Here we have the chassis with the upper and lower radiator hoses being glued in place, as well as the radiator itself glued onto those front fenders. And so far it is looking really nice. I also have popped the wheels into place on the axle hubs. Now these lock in sort of like a monogram kit would, and they do turn nicely in the front. They are a little tight in the back on my example, but that's okay. I can also pull these tires right off the rims because they're very flexible. So what I will do is paint this and not paint inside here where the action is, but paint along the rim in the gloss black or whatever color I choose. Then I can pop the tires back on in place very simply. There is a little bit of a twist in my fenders and frame here. So hopefully I can get that out because the wheels are not touching in all four corners and that is quite important. Also, it looks like my Molotol pen kind of is silvering or something weird because I can really see where I painted this on as well as the two little dots, which weren't as apparent before when I actually started this. But overall, it's coming into shape. What I've done here is I've taken our hood and I folded down the sides on it. And when I did that, it felt really flimsy right where the sides were attached to the hood. So what I did is I got some sheet styrene inside here and I cut little strips and I've cut them back so it won't interfere with the radiator or the cowl and just glued them in place along here. And then I've taken this one quarter inch painter's tape and I've taped the hood sides to the cowl and I've also taped a band across here just to hold it together this way so that when the styrene and the glue dry, it's going to be a tight fit on our hood to our cowl mounting. So basically that is that part there. Once I remove the tape, when the glue is dry, the hood should be able to lift off and be nice when it goes back on after it's painted. Here we have the body after I crazy glued the cowl on, and it's really a combination of crazy glue and testers model cement. So before I glued the cowl on, I added in our gear stick levers and parking brake lever as well as all the pedals up underneath in here. And then I added in our base of the seat for the driver, as well as the jumper seat here for the passenger. And then I crazy glued one side just along here and added testers model cement down here for some plastic to plastic melting. And then once this side was dried up, I was able to add the crazy glue onto this side and then pinch all this and hold it in place as the crazy glue set up. I also added a bit of glue underneath here where the floor pan meets the bottom of the dashboard. And I say that this really turned out nicely with that. So bringing the body over here, can now drop this on into place. Everything lines up perfectly. The little holes that are underneath the door line up with the holes on the fenders. And then the fit and finish of the hood is nice and tight right in there. And there we get our Citroen with the body panels all together. Now all I need to do is paint up the white and gray areas. I'll also need to add in the dashboard, which is going to be a bit of a trick because I have to tilt the body up and then carefully glue it into place, sort of letting gravity, you know, set it in at the right spots. But overall, I think this is coming together really, really nicely. I've worked a little more on the Citroen and added on the headlights, painted the wheels, and glued on the hubcaps. I also removed the paint where the body is going to glue to the fenders. 
The holes here needed to be enlarged slightly so that the body fits snugly to the fenders. Once the body was sitting down to the fenders, I took my hobby knife upside down and just scraped along inside here and here to mark where I will not be painting on the actual body so that this will glue to the fenders and I don't need to worry about scraping off the paint. The paint will go up into the middle along the front here and also onto these edges so that no plastic is visible when you turn over the model. The next step is to map out the Sonia Delaunay paint job. I am using yellow paint for the primary color, and one question I have is, will it look like a taxi when it is done? I don't want that, so I will add in another color so it's not just yellow and black. Here are some colors that work well with yellow. After deeply studying Sonia's automotive paint patterns, I have observed that she divided the height of the car into three rows. The width of the car is divided into columns, and connecting the pattern over the hood and the cowl is similar. The height of our model kit from the doors is 24 millimeters. Dividing by three gives us a height of eight millimeters. We can now cut our masking tape into a strip eight millimeters high. The length of the pattern is the same length as the cowl, which measures 16 millimeters. So going from the cowl, we have 16 millimeters, from the door back this way, 16 millimeters, and then this section, 16 millimeters, and then in the end, it's a little undetermined. Well, I could measure it, it's about four millimeters, but basically that is how it's all divided. And these columns are straight up. They're not over like bricks. So we would have one color here, then the pattern, then the next color, and then down here, the pattern, the color, the pattern, and it alternates that way. For simplicity, the hood measures 30 millimeters in length, so dividing the panels in half would give us a length of 15 millimeters. Here we have our Citroen after applying the masking tape in a Sophia Delaunay style pattern. And I just have the body together just so you can see what it's like. So down here we have our height of 8 millimeters with the length of 16 millimeters. And on the hood, it carries on with eight millimeters tall, but only 15 millimeters, just so that all this looks even. And then here where I have it wrapping up on the hood, the angles are gonna be a bit different. So what I did is I went with another eight millimeter strip along the bottom, and then I got some tape and used it as filler in between here and here. And I masked off this whole area as one strip and then got the little bits of masking tape to measure up into that strip. And then from there, I was able to just cut up again, following the pattern down below in those rows and columns. Then I just simply peeled off the parts that were not connected in there and ended up with this going over the hood. But overall, you can see just how nice that is. So the way I'm going to paint this is first paint the yellow in all the exposed areas, give it about two or three coats, then peel off all our frog tape masking tape. And then inside these zones, I'm going to paint that Sophia Delaunay pattern, which is the square divided in like this with one section being black and black there and gray and gray or something like that however that pattern looks. But overall, that is the way I'm going to try to do this. So about three coats of yellow and then peel off the tape and add in the pattern. Here we have the roof of our Citroen and this is built in four pieces. We have the top, the back end, and there are some braces that will come into here and here. But what I wanted to show you is that I saw a YouTube video of somebody's Citroen over in France and the outside of the roof was actually flat black. But when you looked inside up underneath, it was flat white in here. And all these braces were painted gloss black. So that's an idea I might actually incorporate into this model. And basically the roof is very nice, but you will have to get rid of these mold marks with your number 16 hobby blade in order to make it all look nice and smooth.
One detail that we can improve upon on our Citroen model is the horn. Now here we have the back of the horn and then we actually have the mechanism for the horn and then we have the trumpet sticking out here. Now the issue is that the trumpet is flat across the top so we would want to open this up and bell the hole a little bit so it looks like an actual real horn. Now in order to do this we will need to remove the seam lines from the horn and get this surface completely flat as best we can with our sandpapers and files. And then using our number 11 hobby blade, you will have to find dead center and just make a little tiny pin prick sort of thing right there. And then using a smaller drill, you can drill into that hole as a pilot hole and then get a larger drill such as this one drill into the end of the pilot hole just to enlarge it. And then you can take your number 11 blade again and just at a bit of an angle go around and scoop out the extra plastic and you should get an actual bell look to the end of the horn. Here we have the finished horn with the trumpet end drilled out and doesn't that look a lot better now? This actually does look like a real horn as opposed to just being flat on the end, like at the back. So just with a simple drill and your hobby knife, you can get great results like this, and it only took a couple of seconds. Using a bunch of different pencil crayons, I came up with a Sonia Delaunay style pattern to go in between the yellow of the car. Now here it's orange, dark green, black, and pink. And then we have dark green, light green, orange, and black, followed by just three colors, light green, dark green, black, and then over here, black, light green, brown, and dark green. And then each of our family picked a different one they liked. So there's my wife picking this one, my youngest daughter picking this one, and my older daughter picking this one. Which color or scheme would you choose? The license plates included in this kit follow the new for 1928 French registration system. This system used one to four letters in the front followed by a two letter code and could include a further number at the end after the two letter code. Deciphering the code, our first plate is from Sienne. The second plate from Calvados. And the third from Boucher de Rhone. Which plate would you use? Before I reveal which license plate I chose, let's look at our completed dashboard. Here you can see the instrument panel decal and the silver painted buttons and levers. Just be careful when cutting out the decal because it is a tan colored decal on very light blue paper and it's hard to see. I accidentally nicked a little piece on the bottom. So just make sure that you are a little more careful than I am and you'll have a great success in putting that decal on. I decided to use the license plate from Calvados in the north of France. Calvados is a beautiful historic Norman region located by the Atlantic Ocean across from Britain. Thanks to its warm climate, Normandy is well known for its apple production in all of France. Therefore, Calvados also makes brandy and apple cider, which you can taste in many shops in Normandy. Now let's look at my Sonia Delaunay inspired 1926 Citroen B14 Normandy from Calvados. Regardez Marcel avec la Citroen. Here we have the model after adding on the Sonia Delaunay paint job, and you can see just how great that pattern looks on there. We have a detachable roof, so I will take that off and spin the car around in a minute. But overall, you can see the effort that I put into this, and it did come out quite nice. The steering wheel, of course, and our aluminum edged running board uh, platforms. Again, really a cool model and very fun to build. Now I will show some pictures of the engine in a few minutes here, some stills. But again, you can see just how great this is, and it's all brush painted as well. So again, really cool that way, and a real joy to build. And here it is with the top off. 
you can really see just how much uh, slicker this ends up looking. Very much like a sports car. Again, really cool stuff. The uh, tailgate would fold down, of course, and it lets you in. Now those little hooks on the sides, those could be problematic. Uh, just got to make sure that you're always aware those are there if you get this model because I think they would break off quite easily and that would not be very much fun. Here we have our instrument panel from behind the front passenger seat. You can see that wonderful decal in there just behind the steering wheel. Again, wonderful that it is decal and not just raised letters or numbers that you would have to paint in. So again, real great attention to detail from Heller. Here we have the inside of the pickup bed truck. And again, really wonderful work. I love how the fenders come in as being a black painted item inside there. It really helps to set it all out. And again, we can just see in at the dashboard and the front seats. Again, really wonderful model. And that Sonia Delaunay paint job just makes it all stand out nice and perfect. And here's the undercarriage of our Citroen. And you can see the engine and then those plates again as well as the rear axle and the rear springs. So very nicely done and quite easy to put together and wonderful to paint. As my first fully built Heller kit, I found that this model went together quite well with a few exceptions. I had to enlarge some holes on the kit in order to make the parts fit a bit better. The multiple sink marks needed filler or sanding in order to eliminate them. Although the frame and the fenders had a slight twist in them, they did straighten out once I glued the body onto the fenders. The mounting of the cowl to the front doors was quite tricky, but in order to solve that problem, it was easily remedied by crazy gluing one side and then pinching it together and crazy gluing the other side together. The spare wheel was missing from my model kit, which was quite upsetting to me because I really was looking forward to having the spare tire mounted on the side, which really would have picked up the look of the kit. The entire model was brush painted and that's something that I haven't done in decades, so I hope you like the results. I really like the kit and I would subscribe to the idea of building another one. Did you have the same challenges in building this model kit as I did? How did you end up solving those? After seeing this video essay of the Citroen B14, would you consider getting this model kit to add to your collection? So for now, I will say au revoir and have good fun building your models.